Reaction continues to pour in on Speaker McCarthy's debt limit plan. And while the White House has pushed back against it, many House Republicans are voicing support for the proposal that could be voted on as early as next week. Arkansas Republican Congressman Steve Womack joins us now. He sits on the House Appropriations Committee. Congressman, thanks for taking the time. Where does the debt limit stand inside the House GOP? Well, we've put our proposal forward, uh, but the, the bigger answer is we hit the debt ceiling uh, some months ago. And uh, here we are with extraordinary measures needing to find a path forward to get the debt ceiling raised. Uh, and that's going to uh, require the work of the House and the Senate. But the House yesterday put its proposal together uh, to, you know, its purpose in doing several things. Uh, but more than anything, besides lifting the debt ceiling, it's taking a, sending a signal to the American public that we are serious about you know, stopping the digging of the hole that we happen to be in right now, $32 trillion. So we offered our proposal yesterday. Uh, we'll probably vote on it next week. And once it clears the House and gets to the Senate, then uh, the negotiations can then begin. What about Speaker McCarthy's planner? Can he count on your vote all the way? Oh, he's got my vote. And, and look, he's got the vote, I think, of the majority, uh, clear majority of our conference. And, and frankly, I'd be surprised if we don't have 218 votes uh, to be able to push this uh, through the House next week. Uh, I, I think the Speaker has give, you know, props to Kevin. He's done a great job in cobbling together the, the, the fractious GOP and taking the best ideas from everybody, knowing that at the end of the day, we have to do something on behalf of the American public or, or we're headed to a financial train wreck if we're not already there. So uh, it's not okay just to raise the debt ceiling for the sake of raising the debt ceiling. Because all you do when you raise the debt ceiling is you just kick forward, uh, you know, punt uh, the tough decisions that are going to have to be made. So we're proposing some of those tough decisions right now. But do you acknowledge that at some point this is going to all have to be redone because there is a Democratic Senate and they're going to likely reject whatever comes out of the Republican House? Look, I, we're not naive. Uh, we're under no illusion that everything that we have proffered to this point is going to be signed into law and uh, everybody's going to be happy again. But we do need a basis for negotiations. And it is just uh, the, the president has said he wants a clean debt ceiling. I know Senator Schumer and the Democrats in the Senate want a clean debt ceiling. My friends on the other side of the aisle in the House want a clean debt ceiling. But that is just simply not a responsible way forward. We have a problem. We're 32 trillion in debt. We're spending more than we take in. And even the proposals that we've offered will not be sufficient to keep us from, from, from having to revisit these issues in the future. But I think what signaling, about? signaling to America that we're serious about stopping the madness here, the insanity of over and over again outspending our income is just simply unacceptable. You have a real concern, clearly, about federal spending. But what about if those discussions went on a separate track, on a budgetary track, and the debt limit was extended cleanly? Would you be open to just having these kind of spending discussions in a separate realm, not part of the debt limit? Well, we have to have that discussion. We have to have that negotiation. Whether or not I would be fa in favor of something like that is problematic because, first of all, that has to be the only available option. I don't think that's the only available option. I think there is an option out there that we could coalesce around. The GOP in the House has put forward a proposal, uh, but whether or not it's going to involve the, the clawback of the IRS money or, you know, canceling student loan forgiveness, uh, you know, capping discretionary spending at 1% a year for the next 10 years, I mean, those are all things that we have put on paper and said this is where we're willing to negotiate. We think those are good faith negotiation topics. We think, that, and they poll well with the American public. Uh, so, look, I, I just think we need to have the conversation. We do know, and, and I fully expect, that what we send to the Senate, when, when it comes back to us, it will change. How much it changes and whether those changes will be sufficient uh, to continue to get my vote, uh, you know, will be determined. Congressman, I haven't heard two words out of uh, you today. Medicare, Social Security. You're on the Appropriations Committee. You know that those are major issues when it comes to long-term federal spending. Should they be on the table? You keep talking about spending. Should they be on the table in these discussions? Well, eventually they're going to they're, they're gonna have to be on the table. But let me be careful to say uh, that putting something like that, and, and what you're talking about is entitlement spending, putting the mandatory side of the spending ledger, which is 70% of, of spending in the federal government, 
is going to have to be addressed because the, the size and scope of the deficit and the debt is just too large for us to be able to manage only by dealing with discretionary spending, which is what appropriators do. But I'm also the former chairman of the House Budget Committee, so I have a pretty good working knowledge of where the, the, the major drivers of the deficit and the debt are. And so when we talk about putting those items on the table, what I talk about is we need to strengthen those programs. Americans rely on those programs. We need to be able to have a full-throated adult level discussion about what we can do to strengthen Medicare and Social Security because if we don't when, when congressman when it, now it's kind of like planting a tree when's the best time to plant a tree Bob so it's part of the debt limit discussion today as well, part of the it's it's not going to be part of the debt limit discussions because we've taken those issues off the table but you've asked me if I think they need to come back into the discussion and they will eventually have to because you just can't cut enough discretionary spending to balance the books of the federal government so we're going to be this is going to be groundhog day for us over and over again so when I say Medicare Medicaid Social Security add net interest on the debt to this issue because that's all mandatory spending we have to address those if we're going to sustain those programs and let me just say one more thing about it if we don't those programs are going to get cut on their own because the trust funds are running out of money final question a political one you know this house republican conference as well as anyone if at the end of the day speaker mccarthy is forced to bring a clean debt limit extension to the floor is his speakership safe in that scenario uh, you know, it's uh, it's a hard question to answer because, as you know, we have a we have the ability to do a motion to vacate with one, with one member. Um, we've got a four seat majority. I, I I would just say, as I said earlier, I think Kevin McCarthy's done a great job in putting this conference together on a package that we can agree to. Now, when it comes back, if it comes back as a clean debt ceiling. Uh, People in the House GOP are not going to vote for it. And I don't think Kevin McCarthy is going to recommend that they vote for it. We don't want to mess around with the full faith and credit of our country. But at the end of the day, we have to stop the insanity of continuing to do what we're, we've done that have gotten us to a $32 trillion debt. Congressman, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Great to be with you. Thanks, Bob.